Hello and welcome to Science Visualized. Today we're looking at how to name aromatic compounds. So a quick example of an aromatic compound is here where you have six carbons. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. And you see that between carbon one and two you have a double bond, carbon three and four a double bond, and carbon five and six a double bond. So that would be the skeletal structure of that compound. And that basically is here, and that's benzene. Next, we see an example where you have benzene ring here, like what we saw before, but now you have a side group. This side group is a CH3, so that's a methyl group. Then the name for this structure becomes methyl benzene. It's also called toluene. The next one, now you have an NO3 side group, and that's called a nitro group. So the structure is now nitro benzene. Now you realize that we're not indicating the position of the substituent in in this first example, the substituent is actually at position 1, but we're not showing that because it implies that it's on the first position. Usually when you have only one substituent, you don't need to show the position. So same thing with the nitrobenzene, you don't need to show the position. In this case, we have a substituent at position 1 and 2. It doesn't matter which way you start. You can call the other one 1 and then 2, it doesn't matter. So at position 1, you have a methyl group. And position 2, you also have another methyl group. That will be 1, 2. That shows that position 1 and position 2 has the same thing. And then you use di because there are two methyl groups. So di, methyl, benzene. Number 6, now we have three groups. One option will be to call this number 1. And then 2, 3, and 4. Another option will be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. See this one, if you use the red one, the substituents will be at position number 1, 4, and 5. If you use the green, the substituent will be at position number 1, 3, and 4. So you can clearly see that 3 and 4 is lower than 4 and 5. You always want to use the lowest number possible. But actually the best way to label them will be to start from here. That will be position 1, 2, and then 3, and 4. So if you use the blue, it will be 1, 2 and 4. So that gives you the lowest numbers for the substituents. Now if you look at position number 1, this group has 3 carbons. 1, 2, 3. So that's a propyl group. And then position number 2 has 2 carbons. So that becomes ethyl group. And the last one here, position number 4, that's also another ethyl group. Now if you look at them alphabetically, you have P, E, and E. Which one comes first? If you look at them alphabetically, E comes before letter P. So we will start with the ethyl group. Therefore, the name for this compound will be, we have ethyl group at position number 2 and position number 4. So it will be, I'll use blue so that it matches. So it will be 2, 4, and then dash, diethyl, and then dash, now we put the other substituent at position number one, and that's propyl. It's only one of those. Benzene. If you look at the next structure, we know that we have six carbons in the cyclic system. Now let's look at a straight chain. We have one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five carbons in the open chain system. That is shorter than the six carbons, and therefore the six carbons for becomes the parent name. That means the name you have at the end. So five carbons, that will be pentyl. Think about pentagon, five-sided. The name of this compound will be, we don't have to show that it's on position number one of the ring, so we'll just say pentyl benzene. And benzene is a parent. Next, number eight. We see that now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We have eight carbons, while the ring has six carbons. So that means the 8 one becomes a parent, so that will be octane. That will be the parent name. So when benzene is a side group or substituent, we call it phenyl. Phenyl, sometimes it's abbreviated as PH. So this phenyl is on carbon number 1. So we will say, we'll say 1 phenyl octane. And again, as we mentioned before, you really don't need to show this one. You can eliminate that because 
it implies that it's on position number one if you don't show it. But if it was on another carbon, like say two or three or four, then you will need to show the position. Look at the next example. We have a we have a straight chain. We can count from this side one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. Or we can count from the left one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So if you look at the blue, the substituent is at position number five. But you look at red, the substituent is at position number seven. We want the lowest number possible. And the lowest will be the green one. So position number five. So on position number five, we have this phenol group. And therefore, the name of this um, compound will be 5-phenyl. And then you'll need to put a parent name. If you look at it, it has 11 carbons. When you have 11 carbon, that's called unidecan. The name will be 5 phenol unidecan. Number 10. Now we have a straight chain. You can see that it's, it will be shorter if we start counting from the, from the right. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Just like what we saw before, unidecan. But now, what we have here is a CH2 group connected to a benzene ring. So when you combine these two together, that one is called benzyl. So the substituent now is benzyl. Then the name becomes, it's on position number five, five benzyl unidecan. Next, again, from the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. We see that the substituent is at position number five. When you have a benzene ring connected to a carbonyl, this one here, the carbonyl, carbon double bond oxygen, that's called a benzo group. And therefore the name becomes 5-benzo-unidecan. Thank you very much. Please subscribe.